galwr aelodau i drefn yr eitem gyntaf yn agenda'r prynau yn y mae o'r cwestiynau'r prif wynidog ac mae'r cwestiwn cyntaf gan Leanne Wood. Diolch Llywydd. Uh, what is the Welsh Government doing to tackle child poverty? Well, the Institute for Fiscal Studies predicts that poverty in Wales will grow significantly as a result of the UK Government's savage benefit cuts. We are investing to grow our economy, to create jobs and support children through Flying Star, through Families First, through our childcare offer and the Pupil Development Grant. I'd like to return to the matter of free school dinners, uh, First Minister. Last month, you may remember crowing about the generous offer that you were making, but it is a fact that Wales lags behind the north of Ireland when it comes to school meal provision. There, they've put in place a far more generous earnings limit of £14,000 for families, which is almost double the limit proposed by the Welsh Government. Now, this isn't just a concern for me. The Children's Society are actively campaigning against the harsh limit that you plan to introduce. So can you tell us, how was the earnings limit determined in Wales? Have you examined other earnings limits, and if so, what were they? And as we move closer to 2020, a year in which Labour in Wales had once promised to eliminate child poverty, why is your government introducing a policy that is going to make it worse? Well, there's no evidence at all that will make it worse. Uh, it is a far more, it's a more generous offer than is the case in England. We're providing additional funding of £4 million to local authorities for free school meals via a grant scheme. We're also making an additional £7 million available to local authorities for free school meals in 2019-20. to uh, 20. Our most up-to-date analysis suggests that more children will be eligible for free school meals throughout the universal credit rollout period because of this policy than otherwise would have been the case under the old legacy system. And our transitional protection proposals mean that no child would lose their entitlement to free school meals during the universal credit rollout period and beyond, as any existing claimants will continue to be protected until the end of their school phase. And bear in mind, we have done this despite having no additional funding to manage the impact of the UK Government's welfare reform agenda on free school meals. Vicky Howells. Uh, First Minister, back in February, I raised under the business statement the pioneering work of North Lanarkshire Council in Scotland, which looks to provide uh, free school meals for those eligible 365 days a year. Now, there are proven benefits there uh, to pupils, not just in terms of health and wellbeing, but also in academic attainment too. The Leader of the House said the Welsh Government would be following this initiative with keen interest. What lessons have you drawn from it to date? Well, these are issues that are still being uh, examined. Of course, wh whatever we do is tempered by the funds that are available. Uh, and uh, we know that the situation is not going to get better, though I, I, I do notice that uh, having come into this job as austerity started, uh, as I'm about to leave it, the Prime Minister has announced that it's over. I won't take it personally. Uh, but if it is genuinely the case, of course, that austerity is over, then that will mean that more resources will be available in order to provide the, to provide the kind of services that we would like to provide and that we have by and large succeeded in providing dis despite the iron grip of austerity. Susie Davis. Uh, uh, First <coughs> Minister, the uh, Economic Action Plan states that good quality jobs and regions uh, that are attractive places in which to live, work and invest will provide people with a reason to remain or return to work and live in communities where the Welsh language thrives. Well, good education, of course, underpins this ambition. And while it's these statements seems aimed at uh, young people who are already in Welsh-speaking communities, being bilingual is an advantage in the workplace and a tool of social mobility as well. So what success is your government having in raising the level of Welsh skills in young people who live in communities which, where Welsh is not a community language? Well, one of the lessons we have learned is, despite the fact that Welsh has been compulsory up to the age of 16 uh, in schools since the early 1990s, we cannot say uh, that we have created confident Welsh speakers in English medium schools as a result, which is why, of course, the curriculum is being reformed, uh, showing that Welsh is a skill, uh, which it is for most people, rather than an academic qualification, uh, and ensuring that people are better able to measure their fluency in, in the language. Uh, for too long, we've had an artificial divide between first and second languages, rather than actually measuring the level of someone's uh, fluency. Uh, and that is something, of course, that uh, will be very much part of the curriculum to ensure that uh, Welsh teaching is effective, and also that Welsh is seen as a subject that is there to be studied as a skill, which I think will enthuse many more young people. Question Di, John Griffiths. Will the First Minister set out the Welsh Government's strategy to improve <coughs> road safety? Yes, the road safety framework for Wales sets out the actions we and our partners are currently taking to improve road safety in Wales. We're making good progress to achieve the targets set out in the framework. 
and to ensure that all our roads and streets are safe and accessible for all. Nonetheless, First Minister, there are still far too many deaths and injuries on our roads, and one important mm. response, which is developing a pace internationally and within the UK, is to increase the amount of 20 mile per hour maximum speed limits in inner urban areas. This makes it easier to avoid accidents, reduces the injury if an accident occurs, um, allows the streets to be reclaimed from the motor car, which very often is king in our communities at the moment. If we want more children playing, more elderly people feeling at ease in walking around their communities, more walking and cycling with the health and environmental benefits that brings, then I believe we need to roll out these 20 mile per hour maximum speed limit areas in Wales. One way of doing that would be to have a Wales-wide default um, 20 mile per hour limit in our inner urban areas, um, which would allow local authorities then to take forward traffic orders for 30 miles per hour when it was appropriate, in effect reversing the current position, making it easier and less costly for local authorities to have these um, areas in place, which are so important to community life. First Minister, would you support such a policy to allow communities to reclaim their streets? Well, well, could I uh, give the, the member for Newport uh, East um, an indication of where we are with 20 mile hour speed limits? We are working closely with Public Health Wales to review the evidence available as to the benefits of introducing 20 mile per hour speed limits. That will then inform whether we require a refreshment of the current road safety framework. A comprehensive review of speed limits near schools or on uh, or near trunk roads has been carried out. There is a multi-year programme to introduce part-time 20 mile limits on those, in those locations. Funding has been provided for local authorities to implement 20 mile per hour zones and limits through the road safety and safe routes in communities grants. And I can also inform him that Dr Adrian Davis has been commissioned to carry out an evidence review on 20 mile per hour limits, which will then be used to inform any future policy development alongside our work with Public Health Wales. So a great deal of work is being done. We await now, of course, the results of that work. Mohamed Ashka. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. First, Mr. A few weeks ago, during business statement, I raised the case of a driver in Newport who defied his optician's advice to stay off the road due to his poor eyesight. He was subsequently the cause of a fatal road accident on M4. <coughs> At the moment, it is the uh, responsibility of the driver to advise the DVLA that they are no longer able to drive. Can I ask the First Minister to look into this issue with a view to make a mandatory for an optician in Wales to advise the DVLA when a driver's eyesight has deteriorated to such an extent that they are danger to themselves and other motorists on the road in Wales, please. Well, well firstly, the issue isn't devolved. Um, secondly, I suspect there are some quite serious data protection issues that would need to be overcome uh, if optometrists were told they had to report somebody uh, if, they, if their eyesight was not sufficient to enable them to drive. It is the responsibility of an individual to make sure they are fit to drive. It's the same with their eyesight. It's the same, of course, if somebody has an illness that affects their, uh, their driving. Uh, they are obliged to inform the DVLA. There are, their insurance might be uh, voided as a result. Uh, and, of course, they will face uh, charges uh, if they cause an accident uh, in certain uh, circumstances. So, uh, while I understand the need to ensure that people uh, have sufficient eyesight to be able to drive, I think it is a matter of personal responsibility, uh, and, not, uh, and not a matter anyway, of course, that's uh, devolved to this Assembly. First Minister, can you explain why, when the Labour Group voted here a week ago against Ply Cymru's motion calling for a people's vote on, on Brexit, two of your ministers have been pressing the case for such a vote in, in recent days? Your Health Secretary says the Leave campaign could have committed fraud. Your Skills Minister says Brexit would be a tragedy and seriously damage Wales. Both say they would vote Remain in a referendum that should be held on the Brexit deal. 
Now, I agree, agree with him. The question is, do you or do you agree with your finance secretary who declared that, that a people's vote isn't a policy but a slogan? Well, well, first of all, our policy is very clear with regard to a second referendum. We have said that a second referendum could only come about in certain circumstances. The first uh, is whether or not there is an agreement of the Westminster Parliament and here and the Scottish Parliament. If there is no such agreement, to my mind, there should then be a general election. If the results of that general election are inconclusive, how then do you resolve the issue other than, of course, having another referendum? Well, I think the Labour Party could be accused of creative ambiguity in relation to its Brexit <laughs> policy, but it, I think it would be accused of clarity. And, and no more uh, uh, is that ambiguity uh, on show than in the Labour <laughs> leadership uh, hustings. Now, reports from the, uh, the first hustings uh, held last week in uh, the battle to replace you certainly made for interesting reading. Uh, your skills minister complained about the cuts to adult education. The finance secretary described your attempts at reorganizing local government as, as having been, as he put it, flawed and a distraction. And your health secretary admitted that healthcare could have been better reorganized over the nine years that uh, you've been at the helm. Now, it's difficult to disagree with him when he says more of the same is not enough. But when Vaughan when Vaughan Gething says that Wales, what Wales needs is, is a leader, not a manager, is it the, the finance minister or yourself that he has in mind? Uh, well, having been here for, I will have been for more than uh, nine years, the people of Wales have shown uh, confidence in me and my uh, party, uh, and I uh, leave in the knowledge of that confidence. I have no difficulty with uh, candidates putting ideas forward. That's what they're, they're meant to do. Uh, as long as, of course, they don't conflict with, with established government policy, then it's absolutely right in a leadership contest that candidates should be free to come forward with ideas of their own. They're not going to say, let's do things exactly as they have been. They are, of course. Uh, in a position where they need to bring forward fresh ideas, and that's something I very much uh, welcome. But I do uh, welcome the fact that he is following uh, the, uh, the hustings and the leadership contest within my party uh, with very great uh, interest, and I'm sure he will be able uh, to ask questions of my successor when my successor takes over as First Minister. Now, now, perhaps the biggest criticism uh, made of your government is that you don't like criticism. And it's not just me saying that, but your uh, Cabinet Secretary for Local Government, Alian Davis, who, uh, <laughs> who said, uh, I knew your time would come, Alian, uh, who, said, who said this in, uh, in a lecture to Public Affairs Cymru a few weeks ago. All too often, I've, been, I've seen people pull punches and bite lips while giving evidence to committees because criticism of Welsh Government or Ministers is too difficult for organisations whose funding depends upon the largesse of that same Government and those Ministers. Now this, this culture of silence, the, the Welsh omerta, seems also to extend to the senior civil service. We saw only yesterday the Permanent Secretary refusing to answer questions about public accounts at the Public Accounts Committee. Was this because she was afraid of embarrassing you and your ministers? Far from it. I don't know what he's referring to there. I know there was an issue with the accounts not being available in Welsh, which is unfortunate. It will need to be rectified, and I think it has been rectified uh, by now. Uh, but we are very confident uh, in uh, what we have done in order to uh, provide the support needed to bring jobs into Wales. And today, we celebrate the fact that unemployment is 3.3 per cent. It is below the UK average. We celebrate the fact that we have record employment higher than Scotland. Inactivity. Record employment and economic inactivity is down. These are figures we would have dreamt of not so long ago, yeah. and that shows how important yeah. it is to have a Welsh uh, Labour-led government uh, that provides the support to business and ensures that unemployment comes down below the UK average. That's the devolution dividend. Yeah. 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 Paul Davis. Yeah. 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 Can I also associate myself with the remarks made by the leader of Plaid Cymru and send my sympathies and my party's condolences to Corley Sharpling's uh, family. First Minister, in light of this weekend's devastating floods, do you consider your decision to cut capital spending on flood, on flood defences by almost 50% in 2016-17 wise? 
we have invested uh, a great deal of money, £350 million over this government term, to reduce the risk of flooding and coastal erosion. That's a substantial investment, far in excess to what's being done by his party in England. I have to say, the flood uh, defence spending has been cut very, very sharply indeed. Now, what we will do, of course, is wait for NRW to conduct an analysis of whether there is more that can be done or a reprioritising of some schemes in the light of the evidence that we have seen from the flooding over the course of the past weekend. That is the sensible thing to do, that is the responsible thing to do, but I can say there is already evidence that the schemes that have been put in place have helped to mitigate and prevent flooding uh, across Wales uh, where flooding would have occurred in the past. Well, First Minister, it's about time that you take responsibility yeah, for what yeah. you are actually responsible for here in Wales, yeah. instead of talking about uh, England. And let me give you some of the figures. Let me give you. Let me give you some of the figures between 2015-16 and 2016-17. Capital spending on flood defences was cut from £18 million to £9.5 million. And it's therefore true to say that spending on flood risk management and flood defences is not your government's priority. Once again, your government has failed to understand and address the needs of communities across Wales. Will you now apologise to those homes and businesses for the devastation and havoc that has been caused because of the cuts we've seen to NRW's budget over the years? Does he know how many flooding events there have been in England over the years? There are some things that are very difficult to prevent. We are not in a position where we can prevent every single flood despite the weather. And what we saw over the weekend was an extreme weather event. Despite that, we will work with NRW uh, to understand uh, what more may need to be done in order to mitigate the impacts of flooding in the future. But he simply cannot say, well, you know, this is Wales, forget about what's happening in Whitehall. The money in the main, all of it almost, comes from his government in London. And yet he sits there and says, well, you know, it's all your fault that spending's being cut. Well, in fact, as the finance secretary has already said, if spending had kept pace, if public spending had kept pace and our block grant had kept pace with the growth in the economy since 2010, we would have £4 billion more. Why doesn't he make the case for Wales? We know Northern Ireland had a billion pounds worth of uh, bung money. Why doesn't he make the case for Wales? Yes, of course, we take responsibility in devolved areas, but perhaps me, he might want to take some responsibility and say to his colleagues in London, enough is enough, let's end austerity, give Wales the money that it deserves. The reason we've had to cut spending as a UK government over the last few years is because the shambles, the shambles that you left as a party in 2010, and we're still paying, we're still paying the price of that. Now, First Minister, First Minister, clearly, clearly okay, okay, allow, allow the leader of the, the opposition to be heard. First Minister, clearly, flooding is not a priority for your government because the remit letter, the remit letter from the Environment Minister, which sets the priorities for Natural Resources Wales each year, does not prioritise flooding, flood risk management or water management at all. And this is the latest in a long line of failures at Natural Resources Wales and a weakness of your government to properly manage this organisation. First Minister, how will you and your minister now get a grip of this issue and ensure that flooding and flood risk management will be a priority for you and your government in the future? Well, uh, from a representative of the party that created the Omni Shambles, uh, I don't think we can take any lessons uh, from them. As I said to him earlier on, we, have, we will have provided over £350 million of investment across Wales to local authorities N and NRW to reduce the risk of, risk of flooding and coastal erosion. But he cannot escape the fact that we have seen year after year after year of cuts to our budget here in Wales, even as the DUP's votes were bought by his party, a billion pounds, silence from the Conservative benches. Did they stand up for Wales? Of course they didn't. Did they complain to their colleagues in London? Of course they didn't. Far easier to try and pin the blame on us when our budget is being cut year after year after year than actually try and influence their colleagues in London, over whom they say they have a great deal of influence, and provide Wales with a fair play that Wales deserves, that extra four billion, and of course ensuring that Northern Ireland doesn't get a billion pounds with nothing for Scotland and Wales in the future. That's responsibility. Perhaps he'd like to apologise to the people of Wales for his failure in that regard. Arwenith Group, UK, Gareth Bennett. 
Day uh, Llywydd, and um, I add my condolences um, to the, uh, the families of people who were affected by the tragic events at the weekend. Now, um, First Minister, you will be well aware of the environmental effects of wood burning. Wood burning is seen by some environmentalists as a source of air pollution. Burning wood from trees also release, releases concentrated toxins back into the air, increasing our carbon footprint. So I would like to ask you, First Minister, what is the Welsh Government's policy regarding the burning of wood? Well, we are supportive of biomass. Of course, we want to make sure that the energy mix is as broad as possible, whilst taking into account our commitments in terms of reducing our carbon uh, footprint. Uh, and that's why, of course, we've seen uh, biomass plants around Wales. Of course, biomass is renewable in the sense that you can replant trees in a way, for example, that is impossible with coal. Uh, thank you for that answer. We, there are some contentious um, arguments going on about wood burning and biomass as to whether that really is renewable, so I will task you on, on that if I may. Now, a few weeks ago at First Minister's Questions, you were telling us how EU regulations and guidance were helping Wales and the UK to protect the environment. And yet, um, I now see that the EU has recently promoted the burning of wood as an environmentally friendly and renewable fuel, as you just referred to the practice yourself. However, in adopting this position, the EU has drawn quite pointed criticism from many respected environmental scientists. For example, Eric Lambin of Stanford University said, treating wood as a carbon neutral fuel is a simple policy decision with complex cascading effects on forest use energy systems, wood trade, and biodiversity worldwide." End of quote. The worry is that by treating wood burning as a virtuous renewable fuel, we can end up desecrating forests, increasing the harvesting of global woodland, and ultimately producing increased emissions of greenhouse gas. Bearing all that in mind, First Minister, is your government still confident that the EU is delivering the environmental protections that you have been telling us about? Yes because, well, let me, let me see if I can explain it. Uh, wood comes from trees, and trees grow. Uh, and trees, you can plant trees, they will grow, and they are replaceable in the way that coal, for example, as a fossil fuel, isn't. Uh, and I come back to the point I made early, earlier on, uh, well, a few weeks ago in this chamber. It's because of the EU that the UK cleaned up its act. The UK was one of the worst polluters in Europe. There was a river, I believe it was the River Irwell in Salford, that would catch light if a lit match was thrown into it. Air quality was bad. We contributed hugely to acid rain. Our beaches were filthy. All those things have changed because uh, European regulations have cleaned up Britain. And the last thing I'd want to see is us going back to those dark days in the 80s where, for example, the River Ogmore in Virginia used to run different colours according to what had been put into it uh, upriver. I saw it run green, red, black. I mean, take, take a pick, really. The level of pollution was horrendous. Those days can never return. Yes. Um you're using your well-worn anecdote about the River Irwell in Salford again. Well, we don't have to go as far away as the River Irwell. You also quote the, the River Ogmore. We had two rivers in Cardiff that would also change colours, so I'm not disagreeing with you on that. The, the Taff would turn black with coal dust. The Ely would change into various bright colours as it passed Ely paper mill, depending on which colour dye had just been flushed into the river. But going back to the River Irwell, I'd quote from a recent Cardiff University paper which referenced the recent edition of the journal Natural Geoscience. I quote, but a recent analysis of the Irwell system in the northwest of England found the highest concentration of plastic recorded in any river in the world. End quote. So even with all of these wonderful EU regulations, the river is still apparently suffering from some fairly major pollution. Now, I think there are a couple of points to be made here. One is that you talk about my party, UKIP, wanting the UK to leave the EU as though we don't want any environmental regulations. And you speak as if the moment the UK does leave the EU, all of the environmental regulations will disappear overnight. Clearly this is nonsense and you're merely scaremongering. There is a continuity bill which will ensure that all of the environmental regulations, every single one of them, will be preserved in UK law until such time as the UK Parliament has had time to assess that regulation and determine whether or not to keep it, to amend it or to dispose of it. That process will take some time, obviously, because the legislators will have thousands of EU regulations to examine. 
But another point I would like to make is uh, this. Uh, you, do, yes. you do need to get to a question. I will. You seem to have a blind faith in EU directives and regulations. And, yet the and EU, now I can't hear whether he is getting to a question. I am, I am yes. Thank you, Gary. And yet the EU supports wood burning, and we have people in <laughs> Wales facing potential health risks as a result of that wood burning. There were at least three fires in South Wales at wood recycling plant last year alone. Your Natural Resources Wales, which you oversee, gave a licence to a biomass incinerator neighbouring residential properties near Barry Dock. There's black acrid, okay. acrid black um, smoke. I do need out. a question. How do you respond to the to the acrid black smoke being suffered by residents near that wood burning incinerator? Well, I mean, his party is far more ways in favour of more coal, uh, which means more open cast actually, because that's the only way to really to get at coal in Wales now. That it'd be very, very difficult to sink any deep mines, even if we wanted to uh, to access that coal, and hugely expensive uh, because of the geological force, particularly in uh, in South Wales. But I'm not sure whether he's saying that uh, somehow the EU is polluting Britain uh, with, with biomass, and he, he quotes the River Irwell. Well, so there's this work to be done there, clearly, with plastic. But the point is this. I, I don't make the point that somehow all environmental regulations will fall away as soon as we leave the EU. I make the point that it was the EU that forced Britain to clean up its act. The UK had an awful record when it came to, uh, to pollution. Uh, it was forced to clean up beaches, clean up rivers, clean up the sea because of European regulation. I would not want to see a situation in the future where we went backwards because of some crazed uh, free market ideology that said that environmental regulation is something that should be light to touch. Absolutely not. We pride ourselves on our environment in Wales. We pride ourselves on the fact that it's been cleaned up so much over the past 30 years and it will not go backwards. Question three, Angela Burns. Uh, good afternoon, First Minister. Will you outline how the Welsh Government monitors the effectiveness of spending by local authorities? Well, the effectiveness of its spending is, in the first instance, a matter for each authority and its elected members, uh, including through scrutiny. An easy and lazy option when it comes to local government is to blame austerity and the Tories. Gosh, First Minister, sounds a bit like you and your government. Let me read it again. An easy and lazy option when it comes to local government is to blame austerity and the Tories. It too often ignores other factors, such as poor decision-making when it comes to both budgets and service delivery. First Minister, these are the words of the former Labour leader of your local council, Jeff Jones. The latest figures available... <laughs> The latest figures available for usable reserves over the last financial year show that four Welsh councils hold over £100 million each in reserves, and three of these are Labour-led. First Minister, is it poor decision-making to cut so many services when sitting on millions and millions of pounds? Uh, well, uh, there's very little upon which I agree with Jeff Jones, and uh, that has not changed. But the point is this, is she saying that all local authorities, regardless of which party runs them, are in some way operating badly? Because that's what she's suggesting, that somehow it's all poor decision-making uh, in all parts of Wales, and the local government, in effect, is crying wolf. That somehow the local government has lots of money, uh, and uh, if only for the fact that they delivered services in a different way, uh, they would be able to access far more money. Well, no, we know how difficult it is on local authorities. You know, we know that uh, it is tight. We look forward to the ending of austerity and look forward to the Chancellor providing us with more resources uh, before Christmas, which we can then help local government with. I just don't accept that the problem in local government in Wales is the fact that every local, every local council is taking bad decisions. That clearly uh, can't be right. And we want to make sure that if the Prime Minister is true to her word and the brakes are coming off austerity, that we see further resources coming to Wales and further resources that we can then provide for our local authorities. Sean Gwenllian. Yeah. Ma cyngor gwynedd ymhlith y cynghorau sydd yn mynd i ddioddda weitha yn sgil toriadau yn dilyn uh, setliad llodraeth leol, toriad o hyd at 1 miliwn o bynnau, a hynny ar ben blynyddoedd o doriadau enbyd. Ar y llaw arall, mae bwrdd iechyd y gogledd yn gweithredu ar ddiffig ariannol blynyddol, oedd eu tu 26 miliwn y llynedd. Er gweithar ffaith fod y bwrdd iechyd mewn mesurau arbennig ac o dan eich rheolaeth uniongyrchol chi fel llywodraeth. Ydy hi'n deg cosbi cyngorgwynedd a wdurdod sydd wedi ei ganmol am fod yn gadar neu drefniadau ariannol, ond yn gwobrwyo bwrdd iechyd sydd yn perfformio yn gyson wael ac yn methu'n glir a chynllunio'n ariannol a gweithredu'n effeithiol er bydd trigolion y gogledd. 
Well, you know, um, or Dudley and McIncory, Reich and Hori with the view, Delarian Gary to screw the Oyehid E, Lord Rithley, or Lachas of Faith, but Nun Guide, but Moya Moya Ramoni E. Yehid. I'm a keep who said I know, and I said, wait, now, now, Rachas Yehid and Robert is in Tinny Moya Moy or Alu Bob Blue then. On the way to see in Ginarach, and he Shigweld, a Kang Hessor, and the High Moya no de Gumri. Uh, wrth wneud hynny wrth gwrs, uh, ni'n gobeithio bydd na mwy o'r un ar gael i lywod dreth leol. A sy'n ni'n gwybod bod bod na wasgar yno. A dyddiw ni'n gweud unrhyw beth uh, gwahanol. Ond, mae hwn wrth gwrs a, a gwreiddiau yn y ffaith bod yr arian wedi cael ei wasgu o Lindens. So felly, sy'n bydd yr arian na, bydd ni'n gallu helpu uh, rydw dreth leol yn yr un ffordd a wnaethon ni llunedd. Caroline Jones. Diolch Llywydd. First Minister, as a result of this year's local government settlement, <coughs> local authorities across my region are warning that cuts to essential services are inevitable. BCBC are proposing to close public toilets in Porth Call, Swansea closing care homes and Neath Port Talbot are at breaking point because of the cuts. Uh, First Minister, how is your government ensuring that local authorities eliminate wasteful spending uh, before cutting essential services? I think local authorities take very seriously um, their, their obligations. Uh, and I know that uh, through contact with my own local authority, there are some very, very painful decisions that they're having to consider at the moment, which is not what people go into politics for. I understand that, which is why uh, I have said to them and to others that uh, any extra resources that come from the Chancellor as a result of the autumn statement that uh, local government will be first in the queue, given, of course, the uh, pressures that we know will be placed on local government uh, both this year and in the future. Question Pedwar, Julie Morgan. What plans does the Welsh Government have to provide better public transport around Wales? Well, delivering our ambitious vision for public uh, transport is at an exciting stage as we proceed to reshape rail services via the new Wales and Borders franchise through the South Wales Metro, of course, the North Wales Metro as well, and our plans for active travel, local bus services, and investments in the strategic road network. Um, I thank the First Minister for that response. Um, yesterday it was reported that the number of local bus journeys made in Britain had reached a 12-year low, and during the same period, um, Wales bus passenger journeys have dropped by 5 million a year. I mean, the bus is such a hugely important form of transport for so many people. And so what more can the Welsh Government do to encourage uh, people to take the bus and um, improve the environment and I improve things generally? Well, I believe this will take legislation because we know, and many of us will have had constituents come to us complaining about a bus service being cut. But of course, there's nothing we can do about it because it's a privately run uh, service. If it's not subsidised, there is no, no leverage. Uh, so, uh, in the next few years, the government will be looking at introducing legislation to ensure greater consistency of, of supply and services, to ensure we don't see a situation where services suddenly stop because an operator has gone bankrupt uh, or uh, decides not to run the service uh, anymore. And I think creating that certainty for passengers will create uh, better numbers for the buses because people won't be thinking, well, I might take the bus, but will it turn up? You know, will the service still be there next year? It's absolutely crucial because in most parts of Wales, we have what's in effect a private monopoly. Uh, there's no real competition along most routes. Uh, this is not what bus privatisation, even if you agreed with it in the 80s, was meant to do. And so we must now look at a new model that provide, that looks upon bus services as just that services rather than something to deliver, deliver entirely through um, competition which doesn't really exist. Nick Ramsey. Uh, First Minister, I'd like to focus on disabled access to public transport and uh, specifically the ongoing lack of access at Abergavenny Station. Uh, you mentioned uh, the rail network, the importance of that and the, uh, the new franchise. Uh, we didn't get very far uh, under the old Arriva uh, South Wales Border franchise uh, dealing with problems of uh, lack of uh, disabled access, much to the frustration of local people in my constituency, including prominent disabled access campaigner Dan Biddle. I wonder if you can give us an assurance that under the new Transport, Transport for Wales structure uh, and under the new franchise as we move forward, that the necessary improvements will now be made so that rail passengers across Wales will be able to benefit from unfettered access, whether or not they're able-bodied or disabled. Yes, £15 million has been uh, allocated for that purpose. Abergavenny Station is one of the stations that will be upgraded to ensure, dis well, upgrade is the wrong word, uh, really, that, that will, will ensure that uh, what should be normal, i.e. disabled access, will be there. There are other stations as well. I was at Katay st Station yesterday. It's not possible for people to cross to the other side uh, of the tracks in Cate, so there's a bridge, but, but there's no other way of doing it. That will need to be resolved as well. 
but I can assure them that, that Abergavenny is a, as an important station uh, will see that work done. Beth Ann Syed. Uh, the Weltag report uh, that proposes uh, the closure of Junction uh, 41 westbound states there is a goal to try to ease congestion uh, in that particular area, and they're trying to say that people need to get uh, out of their cars, and something that I would agree with. Uh, but in that particular area, we've seen downgrading of bus times uh, to the Avon Valley, and that new transport for Wales franchise does not benefit uh, the south-west of Wales um, as we would like it to. We're seeing huge uh, proposals in finances to be put into a stretch of the M4 that we disagree with. So how are you going to realise uh, the intentions of that report when community transport is far from perfect here in Wales? And that's the record of your government. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, first of all, what she's talking about is a capital project, uh, the M4, and what will be revenue funding with regard to bus services. They're, they're two different pots to begin with. But it's not right to say that, that, that South West Wales will not benefit because the metro is not just about trains, it's not just about light rail, but it's also about bus services. Now, of course, uh, the bus services have recently been devolved to this institution. There's an opportunity now for us to uh, make sure the bus services are properly integrated into the train services, but of necessity, because we have control of the train services now, uh, that will be taken forward uh, over the next uh, five years and beyond. And then, of course, uh, subject to legislation, bus services, including those in the Avon Valley, uh, will be brought into a proper metro network. Question Pimp, Sean Gwenllia. I have a privilege of that scanning and policy sort of coming to get dressy aisle gartrevi. When you deploy a policy at dressy, you have to be hands-on, penodol, camera, and in on our regulation and in framework policy dressy. But in general, it's a policy at dressy aisle gartrevi. Do you ensure that in Katina, what the five board pin million of people pretend better than better die? No, more or gartrevi. So, but brandy size can meal of people and even all are becoming a point can really send trussle trust. In our are we the unclear yet? What in Katina, and in general, and heg and ang hydrad. Better than a pin meal of oil gartrevi and winner. So, but brandy zoo wheel are a good rester arrow some day can be thistle in the tea. Yn y sir. Dwi yn fel chwel eich bod chi o'r diwedd yn dilyn pwysau gan Blaid Cymru, yn dechrau mynd i'r afal ar anomaly sy'n golygu nad ydy rai perchnogion ail gartrefi yn talu trethu cyngor na threthu busnas sy'n golled anferth i'r pwrs cyhoeddus. Ond mae'n alawar iawn mwy angen i wneud i helpu teuluoedd sy'n cael eu prisio allan o'r farchnad gan bresenoldeb nifer cynyddol ail gartrefi yn eu cymuneda. Un peth syml y gallu di wneud yng Nghymru ydy newid bychan i'r system cynllunio. Ei wneud i nofynnol i unrhyw anedd gael caniatad cynllunio cyn y gallu di droi'n ail gartra, fydda wedyn yn galluogi cynghora i gael gwell rheolaeth ar y sefyllfa. Ydych chi'n cytuno fod angen y newid yma ar fyrder? Ni wedi edrych ar hwn, dwi wedi mor rwy dda na, achos... Uh... Beth sy'n ei gweithio ni er enghraifft yng Nghyrdi, i'r lle mae'n anolod fawr o, o, o fflatiau yn cael eu adeiladu rhain o'n ail gael trefoedd. Um, o diwrnod mil byrrau cael um, er enghraifft um, <laughs> cynnydd ac yn llunio i bob un ohono o Reina. A ni wedi gyda, gyda, gyda ail gael trefoedd, beth yw ail gael trefoedd, os mwyn nhw'n falle yn byw mewn un am hynna'r amser un am hynna'r arall, pwy nhw'r ail gael trefoedd. Os mae'n lloegr, 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 os mae'n so, we'n deall y pwynt mae'r ma, ma aelod yn wneud, ond dwi ddim coet mwy rwydd yna. Beth felly yw'r ateb? Wel, ni wedi eich cwrs sicrhau bod cynghorau'n gallu um, codi mwy o dreth cyngor ar ail gartrefi. Ni sicrhau eich cwrs uh, bod rhywna sy'n prynu ail gartrefi yn talu mwy yn a uh, ar treth prynu uh, y tir, mwy na wir hefyd. Uh, ond hefyd eich cwrs, mae'n ei cael system cynllunio sydd yn sensitif uh, i'r, i'r iaith yn unwedig, ond oedd wedi dir mwy o dai, sydd er mwyn sicrhau bod uh, bobl lleol ddim yn gofod cystadlu uh, gyda bobl uh, diwad, uh, a hefyd bod yn gallu cael um, cymysgedd o dai i, um, i, i ddewis uh, o er mwyn ddigwrs bod bod tai ar gael yn yr ardal. So, mae raid cael mwy o dai, a mwy o dai ffordadwy er mwyn sicrhau bod bobl yn gallu byw yn ei cymunedau. Mwyn deall mae'n rhaid cymunedau o Gymru y mwyn a yna anodd. David Melding. Uh, first Minister, I do agree that housing is an asset like uh, uh, no other, really, and has to be treated with its social dimension very much in mind. And uh, for this reason, I do agree that government can look at uh, uh, 
policies like a premium on the council tax. Where you do that, however, shouldn't it also be uh, at least, very least, the guidance that any extra revenue so generated is then reinvested in affordable and social housing? Well, I, I would hope that uh, local councils do that anyway. We know that there are uh, many local authorities in Wales now who are building council houses. We know that in rural Wales particularly, I think Powys is the example I always use, Powys lost half of its social housing stock um, from the end of the 1970s onwards. So many houses were sold, they never found their way back into the um, hands of people who could afford to buy them because the prices had, uh, had gone up so, uh, so far. So yes, uh, it is hugely important that there is more uh, affordable housing. Some will be rented, some not. Uh, I was with a building company last week, for example, who said to me that 70% of the houses they sell are sold to have to buy. Uh, without which they probably would find it difficult uh, to sustain their current level of, uh, of activity. But it is hugely important that we're able to provide more houses uh, across Wales, but particularly in rural Wales, where uh, there is not as much choice in terms of um, house size and in terms of price. How will we do that? Well, of course, we are uh, on target to deliver 20,000 affordable homes by the end of this Assembly term, which will make a significant contribution. Question Chwech, Janet from Saunders. Will the First Minister make a statement on Welsh Government procurement? Well, we're committed to maximising the social, economic and environmental value of our procurement. Thank you. I have recently acquired a list of transactions on Welsh Government procurement cards for the 2017-18 financial year. I was, however, very shocked to see that nearly £1.6 million was spent on these credit cards um, over the 12 months, with many of the transactions remaining were linked vague. One example is the 13,255 spent through PayPal. No information about what was bought or from what companies. Another, £460 spent at yachtshop.co.uk, or the 8,300 spent in one transaction on a British Airways flight. There are also countless instances of these cards paying for Amazon Prime or iTunes subscriptions with no details. What steps are you taking as First Minister to improve transparency and financial probity whilst monitoring the spend of hard earned taxpayers' money on these Welsh Government procurement credit cards? Well, we regularly publish, of course, our spend over £25,000 to improve the transparency of how public funds are used. I will uh, call on the examples the member has used and uh, look to provide her with a detailed answer to her questions. Jenny Rathbone. Um, obviously, we have the Welsh Audit Office to uh, monitor the detail of these things. Um, I was, uh, just wanted to ask you um, about the, the, the wider picture is uh, in terms of uh, the procurement uh, power that we have. We, we have a public sector that spends over £4 billion each year on procurement. And... Um, I'm very interested in how we might be able to procure more um, uh, of our spend in Wales so that we're generating local jobs rather than with local uh, with um, an, in multinationals who then export the profits. I'm particularly interested in the work that's been done by the National Procurement Service around procuring food. Um, I'm concerned to see from the, the Climate Change and Environment Committee's report on last May that there is no public source of accurate and up-to-date figures on public sector recurement of Welsh food. So I'd be keen to learn how we can improve the procurement of local food um, in Wales, and uh, because obviously that would um, be good for our businesses and also good for our health. Well, what I can say that um, we, of course, encourage Welsh public bodies to increase the visibility of contracts via sell to Wales. Of the 22,000 contracts awarded so far through Sell to Wales, approximately two thirds have been to Welsh suppliers, and 75% of these have been to Welsh SMEs. I know the member asked about the National Procurement Service. I can say that the proportion of public procurement expenditure won by Welsh based firms now stands at 50%. Uh, from the 1st of April 2017 to the 30th of June of this year, the spend through MPS agreements uh, was £7,700,000, and of that, 57% was Welsh based suppliers. Where our community benefits policy is applied, the figures are even higher. So, for example, 82% uh, of the money has been retained in Wales when that is applied. She asked, of course, how we increase this. We want to do that. 
through the uh, importance of regional and, and local priorities within local uh, authorities. And we are exploring the adoption of different approaches where regional collaborative procurement is undertaken, which strengthens the economy and communities within those regions. Question Scythe, Jane Hutt. <coughs> Will the First Minister make a statement on progress towards Wales becoming a real living wage nation? Well, the Welsh Government is a living wage employer, and I'm proud that this Government has taken action to support and encourage take-up of the real living wage by employers in both the public and private sectors. Well, of course, First Minister, uh, the real living wage makes a, a real difference to people's lives, benefiting wage earners, their households, communities and local economies. And I know, ahead of Real Living Wage Week, you've always um, actively supported uh, events during uh, early November. What further action can be taken to promote the real living wage across particularly the public sector in the health service, local government, but also in further and higher education? Well, we've got a strong push on this across the public sector. In government, of course, our sponsored bodies, the NHS, national parks, uh, HEIs, uh, some local authorities, for example, they all pay the, um, the living wage to their own, the real living wage to their own staff. Uh, of course, we need to make sure that applies across local authorities. It needs to be seen as something which is normal, not exceptional, within the uh, public sector. And we want now to move on to use the buying power that we have in the public sector to ensure the wider adoption of the real living wage as part of fair work across the economy. I can all that question. Oith Beth and Syed. What assessment has the First Minister made of the reform of housing revenue account subsidy scheme in England? Well, I'm pleased that following the exit from the housing revenue account subsidy system, uh, all affected authorities have a council house building strategy in place. They're all at different stages, and we're working with them to increase the pace and scale of their plans. Um, as you've mentioned, as part uh, of the exit from this scheme in 2015, a borrowing cap of £1.85 billion was placed on councils, which retained housing stock. Given that Theresa May has announced that English councils will no longer have a cap on their ability to borrow to build new homes, will the Welsh Government look into renegotiating the current deal with the Treasury? After all, it makes more sense to borrow to build homes when there is no right to buy, as is the case in Wales, than England where homes can be built and then sold for less than market yeah. value. In Wales, that investment will continue to be returned over the long term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's correct. I mean, at the moment, the borrowing cap is one point, uh, was it 1,927 uh, million. Now, I saw the Prime Minister's announcement. Uh, officials have been in touch uh, with representatives in the UK government to see how that will work. And I think it's fair to say that no one seems to know at the moment uh, that the announcement was made, that it doesn't seem to be any detail. But I can assure the member that what applies in England in terms of flexibility, we would expect to apply in Wales. Diolch i'r prif wynido, gyrraedd ymnesaf felly i'r datganiad.